and he just fucking what do you call it on a stoner? Uh, pretzel rocks. So this does not get canceled. Do 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 do. Radio. Wait, what was the one I listened to the last time? The synth wave? That's what it was. Let's get this wrong. I don't even know. Okay, here we go. Pull this up here. Coach content all for it. Me too, brother. Me too. Um, can I do the pop out? There we go. Do that. All right, let me post on uh, Twitter and stuff. Oh, that up too high. There's the sweat. So... That's the right link. Let's put a little nice little we'll put a little put a Ralphie, there you Ralphies. I'll do that one. Oh, it's fine, right? Let's hope for the best on this. We click on that, make sure it comes up. That does come up, so that is good. We'll listen to some tunage, I guess. I hope it's not too loud, but let's take let's just take a dive in here. It's 10:52. Okay, let's take a little dive in here. Take a look at what we're what we're looking at. So this game's from a couple weeks ago, I guess. <coughs> and we were. Uh, it was right after we played Atlanta. It was right after we played Atlanta. We didn't really... The comp we rolled out with against Atlanta didn't really... Wasn't really great. I mean, I don't want to say it wasn't great, but it, it wasn't... It wasn't effective in that game, and we kind of got dominated a little bit on the... Uh, on the dive. So, you know, we had that conversation the night before. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's going on? Beating Philly and Outlaws this week? I sure hope so. Um... Well, yeah, we so we ended up pivoting. Obviously, KSP has been. I'm pretty sure he played almost every single match for us this year. Um, but uh, but yeah, we decided to pivot onto the dive. We didn't know. We saw Boston play that day before. We saw him play a lot of the rush. We saw him play a little dive. We figured, hey, if we get a dive mirror, it's Boston. You know, we could pick up a pretty easy win here. And it actually ended up being the uh, the fastest time in league history until. Uh, the Titans uh, dropped the spaghetti last week, alright? So, I was going to play this, kind of walk through it. Um, take a look at, you know, goods and bads and things like that. Um, this is actually is pretty fine, right? Objectively speaking, on, on dive, you really want to be trying to maintain... Not maintain. Try to take as much space as possible, right? So if you're on a more static comp, if you were say you're on Ryan Sigma on this map, like this, what Boston's doing um, is like as kind of as if they are on like a static comp, right? 
if you're on a static comp, you'd want to come through, you know, come to an area that you have, you force the enemy team to dive you in kind of like a shitty location. Um, that there's not a ton of long sight lines that you could take a bunch of poke from. Um, but if you look at how we play the, the neutral initially, we rolled that right. We were going to take this side of the map and start staggering people around and take like this whole portion of the map. But because they were running the Sigma and we were running the D.Va, we didn't want to fight in there. We didn't want to try to take a fight there. And we figured that we could either easily get people to be over here or over here, which is great diveable locations. And the good old mini B, dude, um, is it's hard to protect over here, right? So if you look, you know, our tanks, they're maintaining that space that we initially wanted to take. And they were rotating the back line around. Keeping that back line in a very far sight line away from uh, away from their divers, right? And especially since they're on the Sigma, the longer the sight line you could have here, the, the better it is, right? I mean, where's Mr. Kai? Oh, he's somewhere around here. Or, uh, I'm sorry, Sha yeah, Shax, Shax, we're not running Nash, right? So, um, yeah, so Shax is poking. And then, uh, and then Kyle is taking space, right? So we we're essentially taking like 75% of the map um, for free. So kind of bad on Boston. But. Do you think Genji is going to be played less than Owl with the new nerfs? I don't know. I mean, y you know, you say, you say, hey, like it could be, could be a big nerf. Um, Um, yeah, you, you never, you never know. So, um, you never know. Like, I, I didn't think Genji was going to be good in the first place. Ended up, he's busted. Let's take a look at how this fight goes for a second here, though. So, uh, you know, we... We win that first fight, and now we should be looking at like what we're doing with our positioning here, and we'll see what kind of develops. Um, obviously, in the dive mirror, right? They swap Punk over to the to the Diva. We're on a full mirror now. We should be looking to get aggressive every single fight. We should be looking to be to engage, um, and we should be hunting uh, hunting this guy, hunting him at all times. His arms are going into space, but the fuck? Hello, game. All right, let's go back like that because I fucked the thing up a little bit. <laughs> so really good by KSF, you know. When, and the thing is, once in in these dive mirrors, once you initially get that Zen kill, you're afforded the ability to play like way slower because they have number one, no, not a lot of healing. They don't have, you don't really have healing to start with, but. They, they don't have a lot of their damage, right? So it's very difficult for them to push back into you and them to be, like, aggressive um, at all. So hunting him and finding him is, you know, uh, the most important thing. And even, I guess something I want to highlight here is we lost uh, Shax, right? He's just coming back because he overextended a little bit in the last fight. But if you look at what our positioning is here from the top down, we're doing a good job of playing safe enough, playing within our Zen sight lines, and trying to control space without overcommitting. Right? We know we're close to ults. We know, you know, we know their Zen's coming back from spawn. Tracer's gonna get back, you know, probably roughly about the same time, and we could look for another dive to get in here. So, um, pretty good dive. And you know, I mean, you know, it's a uh, a pretty good point when oh, this song sucks. Um, you know, it's a, a pretty good point when you end up, uh, I guess, initially having um, there's then not even on ninety percent when you're at, or not even at one hundred percent when you're like ninety percent. So pretty good. Um, Do we lose this fight? 
Or do we have enough ults to... Let's see what happens. We might watch this one back. So we're just going for like a little bit of a soft reset. Okay, so let's look at what happens here. Because do they just have a ton of alts or what's going on here? That's our rally. Okay, so we're looking for a rally blade. I guess we didn't think they had trance maybe. And then our target focus kind of gets, uh, gets jibbed up a little bit here. Uh, I saw our tracer. Where's our tracer at now? Shaq's at. There he is. So Shaq's in here. KSF had a bail. Our tanks are up here, up here, like fighting into a rally. Zen got <coughs> or Zen got killed a little bit, but um Fusion beats us. We beat outlaws. <coughs> Goal is to win both, brother. Goal is to win both. Um, don't know if you answered this before, but you mentioned earlier, I think the KSP has been playing almost every game. Just curious how you decide to play KSP or KSF. Um, I mean, they have different, they have inherently different, different pools, right? Like KSF is like, uh, I mean, he can play some hit scan. Um, he played hit scan last year, but, um, he's been playing flex DPS for us all year. Um, it was more a decision of if we wanted Shax or KSP to play, the tracer in the comp and um yeah Shax is probably the best tracer in the league in my mind he's the best tracer in the league and he, like it sucked because like moving Kai out feels like a big hit because Kai is just such a great player but um you know sometimes you do what you need to do to get the right people in for the right comp you want to play would you see more Diva, wait, Diva more for Peel, or you prefer to have her more aggressive? It kind of depends on the comp. Like, if, if like, if you're in dive, right? It, it's uh, I always say it to Gravy. Is it's, it's, it's a character that's like a Swiss Army knife. If you guys know what that is, right? Ah, oh, fuck, man. Um, it's um, it's one of those situations where with with D.Va, we could actually watch Gravy's POV on this map. You'll probably see a little bit of both, but with D.Va, you know, you can play hyper-aggressive, you can play to peel. Depending on what the enemy comp is, you get a lot more flexibility and decision-making. You can play for high grounds, you can play for off angles, you could do, you know, kind of everything in between. But, um, it just kind of depends. So, um, yeah. Why is Anna not good anymore? Anna was just banned. I don't think Anna is, like, necessarily, like, inherently a bad pick. Um, but it, the, I guess the thing you have to look at is you have Anna or you have, you know, a character like Baptiste who has an immortality field. So like, this is already kind of talking about what I was just talking about there, right? Like, it's like a Swiss army knife, right? Like, like, Hey, okay. We're setting up a dive. We're setting up a dive as this is happening. You scoop it forward. Okay, cool. They want to go. He goes in. All right, well, we can Matrix out. We get the kill on their Zen. Like, we're pretty comfortable there. All right, well, now he goes back. He plays for Peels, plays the back line. And if, you know, if we're... Now now what he should be doing is, like, anchoring with that back line to make sure that, you know, since we have that Zen advantage, we're not going to lose Lastro as we're going through. Um, and that we get this cap control, and we then we can maintain space. Um, but that's what, like, the D.Va, it's like a, uh, you, like, if you guys know, like, ebb and flow, right? Like, this and that, move, like, in and, in and out. Um, that's really what D.Va's all about. Um, you know, and sometimes they're better than others, but, like, to be honest, kind of a little bit sketch there. Don't know if he should have full committed to that. I'm gonna watch that. I'm watch that again real quick. I guess it, it makes sense what we did there. Um, 
just for the fact of like we we already lost one of our DPS and we still like we still needed to go first. We're coming up on ults. Like we have to figure out some kind of way to get back in the fight. Um, it's not too bad. I have to give over the cap. Kind of chunked a the fight there for no reason, but I think K or KSF just died. So when major patches come out, are teams giving a heads up or just clueless as normies? Um, yeah, we're pretty clueless. Like when they were make like the Genji changes or they do this or that or whatever. We find out at the same time as you. And then we go, what the fuck, man? And then they're like, oh, hey, you're playing on it in two weeks. And we go, what the fuck? Like, you know. Is what it is. That's what I went on this big rant. Uh, maybe, I don't know. It's like a week or two ago I was streaming and I went on this big rant about how like last year when we got into like the that goats you know s stage two stage three like the game in my opinion was like it was like at like a perfect place it was like an absolute perfect place because what it was was you had triple DPS you had two 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 you had um, you had somber goats, you had goats, you had, you know, people could run quad tank if they wanted to. Like, there were so many different archetypes and, you know, things that teams could play. And you, you look at, like, Chengdu last year in triple DPS, like, the entire year. And they were fine with it. And we went from running goats to somber goats to triple DPS and somber goats to, like, trying to, like, uh, um, like, hard out the counter what our opponent was doing. And then, like, they kind of, like, punished uh, teams that were doing that to go, oh, hey, we're going to do the 2-2-2 because two, 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 people want to see more DPS. When in all reality, like, stage three, like, the teams that were really good in stage three were, like, us. We ran Sombra Goats in triple DPS. Uh, Shanghai ran triple DPS. Shock ran a type of Goats that no other team ran. And Hangzhou ran, um, ran regular Goats, Winston Goats. So, like, there were so many different archetypes and this and that and everything else that were being played. Um, and then now it's like, oh, hey, well, you know, it happens. But, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Um, this is probably a good map to watch from the top down because... You think it'd be good if the devs gave you a heads up or not? Um, I don't really care personally. This this game in general has like a lot of like the what the fuck kind of moments, so it's like, uh, I mean, they're gonna do what they want to do and how they want to do it. And like, I think like the surprise of like the new patch and things like that is good. Um, it's more so. Let's watch. Let's watch how much Kyle does here, because I feel like he didn't he have like an AKM blade or something on this. Um, I feel like it was. Um, I feel like it was. I don't know, man. Like, like there's just been like a bad relationship, or it was a bad relationship, or whatever, and then they kind of like, cause like I think like in season one, shits like. Things just got leaked like all over the place. They never wanted to share information and blah 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 blah. And then, yeah, it just kind of happened. But okay. Oh my god, get dominated, Kyle. Okay, let's we'll watch top 10. That's kind of boring, but yeah, he did get dominated there. Um. But this map, I don't know if you guys remember this map, but, like, it was a very interesting map, to say the least. We're going to talk about the leak. Um, just, I, I was saying that I feel like the reason why we don't get information from Overwatch League earlier anymore is because in, in Season 1 they had a very bad... Uh, history with like players and staff and whatever leaking stuff so it really built that relationship in a negative way and it's still being rebuilt but you know it is what it is 
Now, the thing that's interesting here is we've actually, in scrims, we played against the, like, every team in the league was like playing this comp. And we had like such good success against it. And Hanamura is probably one of our best maps. But like, we just fucking fumbled, fumbled the ball, man. Like, we couldn't do anything proper. Two minutes and Kyla is 36 on a blade. We have 50 on our dive tanks. I actually think, I actually think, if we saw this comp, um, and we were running Ash Genji. Gravy needs to go Sigma. And if Gravy goes Sigma, then we can just shield up here. You know, walk, walk in here. Like, take this space. Like, or we could even, like, sh shield up here. You know, get our monkey in, like, you know, back line over here. And then, like, swing wide and take, like, long sight lines or something. But, yeah, we don't really end up doing that. And punishes us. Oh, like roll queue getting leaked in season two, yeah, something like that. There, I mean, it was. Oh fuck, man! It was so much shit. It was so much shit throughout the throughout the fucking league. Like, like if you look at what we're actually accomplishing, man, like it just feels like a whole lot of nothing. Like we had Kai on the high ground just turning. Like Lastro somehow is over here. Lastro's over here. Our other back lines here, Gravy's, uh, just, I don't know, man, just way fucking out here. Now we go to chase this Genji, and I, okay, I mean, this is just really bad. This is just really bad, but, so what should be happening now is we kill this Genji, we should be regrouping, we should be regrouping, I don't know where Gravy's going. We could regroup, we could come main, we could touch point, we could take all this space and force them to touch. But, unfortunately, we're sitting at a three minute blade. Are scrims any different from actual matches except for the crowd? Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're different. Um, the, the difference is though, it's, um, the difference is, like the quality of play a little bit like in scrims you're okay to try stuff out and like you know do this do that whatever like work on like the fundamentals of a comp like what people are doing inside that and how you can make that work but you know in these matches right coaches can't say anything um except in between the maps like you know it's a lot more like critical thinking and decision based like all that kind of stuff um why didn't you guys play tracer genji so on this map we actually wanted to play Ash on defense. We like Tracer Genji on defense is not great on this map. Ash was is really good, and we actually had that like we run like Ash Mercy on defense, and like it was a really good pocket strat. We had a great success with it, so we wanted to try to make it work because we you have to remember right, we didn't play dive at all this week. We played it against Atlanta. We we're like, oh shit, teams are running dive. What the fuck? And we play against Atlanta, we, we see that, and we're like, man, like, we could pivot. And maybe we need to on some of these maps. And, like, let's take a look. And then we, we pivoted. And we had, like, a two-hour review in the morning on how we need to play this dive. And then we booked, it, like, a scrim before to, like, get, like, like a two-hour practice session before like, this match. And, like, that was all we practiced on dive. So it was, like, on some of these maps, it was, like... Dive, we could force it, but a different comp seems better anyway. So, like, don't force it. We could play what we were playing. Um, I remember talking to Hunter during this this uh, this game. It was it was right about now, and I'm like, dude, like, why the fuck are we just not playing dive right now? And I'm like, you know what? Like, our like the reason we weren't doing that was because like our defense was so good, and the pocket strat we had with the with like the Mercy, Ash, etc., etc., worked out like so well, so many times that, um, you know, we wanted to see, like we wanted to make sure that, like we were able to do it. Um, and I guess in a sense it pays off, especially against teams that, um, that run Rush, like, the, is the issue is like, um, 
when you play a map like this, and you're preparing for a team like Boston. Okay, hold on. Let me, I'm gonna fast forward here. Um, now, when you're like, when you're preparing for a team like Atlanta that can really play anything, it's a little bit harder. When you watch the team like Boston played the day before, and they were playing, um, they were playing dive and they were playing rush, and we're like, okay, cool. Like, what is our best educated guess on Hanamura of what they're going to play, right? And we actually thought that on their defense, they would also run rush. So we we were kind of preparing and like leading things towards them playing rush on both attack and defense. Um, not Twitch TV packing. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sag. I'm probably going to stream on there later tonight. Uh, I'll, pro I'll probably stream on there later tonight. Play some golf with friends or something, bro. Um, I've been killing. I've just been trying to chill. I'm so stressed out recently. Uh, makes sense. I was thinking that if you play Tracer Genji all the time, you can practice a lot of comp. And yeah, the issue was Abdullah that we we play we didn't play dive at all the week leading into it. Like we've played dive in the past, we've practiced it in the off season, but we didn't play dive at all this week prior because we were planning to play a lot of the Ash Genji stuff against uh, Atlanta. Like that's what we were playing, and we were like, I don't want to sound rude here, okay? But when we go in. When we go into these um, these matches, right? If you have double week matches, you pick one match to focus on hard, and then you pick one not to, right? Because if you don't have a similar map pool, then you have to be a, like, they, there's not enough practice time to be good at every single map, right? So, um, what we chose to do was we said, hey, we'll put our eggs in the Atlanta basket. Um, if we don't beat Boston, we're just fucking bad. So. Um, but yeah, um, and moving forward, yeah, the thing is, Abdullah, with hero pools and how it works, like, we have dive synergy, right? Like, like we do. Um, we, like I said, that's one of the reasons why we practice it in the off season and, you know, all that kind of, all that kind of shit. But, um, with hero pools, like, we played this, this match and then we had next week off. So it did not matter what we did. We actually took last week off. Completely. Well, maybe like one or two days of scrims. Just a little bit. But like... We... we yeah, yeah. So like... the first, So if we had... If we had... Uh, if we had matches last week... Um, you know, we probably still would have went with the same strategy going forward in here. But then we probably would have practiced dive all week. 100%. Yeah. Swears. Sorry, Sky. I'm an aspiring Overwatch player. I look up to Rain. I'm curious what makes his play unique, and maybe see if I can learn from it. Well, Rain, Rain is very, very buzz. What are you doing? My dog, dude, is like I don't know if you can see. He's like on me, dude. He's like loving me. Um, but uh, Rain is see, he's such an intelligent player. Um, that he's always making, like, good decisions, right? And, like, mechanically, I, I think, like, if you're a main support player, like, you need to be thinking, um, a couple steps ahead. So, that really, I'm gonna let this play so we're not just sitting here with nothing going on. I'm gonna change this song, too, because this song sucks. Um, but, uh, you need to be thinking, like, one, two, three steps ahead, right? Um, and, uh, he does a really good job of that. Um, he's always like finds himself in good positions and like has like the the spatial awareness to understand where he needs to be to min max his value. Um, that comes with a lot of time playing playing the role and a big understanding of um, the macro game. And I think that is something that if you're a support player in this game and you want to be good, that's one of the re one of the things that separates really good support players and really bad support players, or really good support players and average support players. Because they, they will always find ways to put themselves in good situations and put themselves in situations where they they give the most value to their team on a like on a like a a graph. Like value over time, theirs will always be more consistent. His will be more consistent because of how he understands positioning. Like, okay, here's a great example of him playing Mercy, okay? Look now if you look at 
what he does here, what would, like, if you think, like, what would I do in a situation, right? Um, let me go to his POV. It might even be better, okay? Like, what would I do in his situation, right? And it's like, okay, like, you know, he's, like, playing pretty safe, playing pretty safe. Um, like, constantly moving. It's fine. But there's one key thing here, right? We're fighting, we're fighting, we're fighting. They're calling, right? They're calling. And instead of, so he was waiting for his GA to come back up. And something as simple as this of like, okay, hey, there's a turret here that's going to do some chip damage, some chip damage to him. Um, there are, Now there's a fucking entire team of people over here who are going to run at him. But instead of going, okay, cool, like I'm going to swing wide, take the chip damage and maybe get headshot or maybe get, you know, take some damage from somebody and then not be able to like escape. He actually comes back into the point, does not care. Knows his guardian angel is coming back up, and then is able to escape, get back to the furthest back position of our entire team. Again, right behind, a, re realistically, two tanks with Bob going in, um, who are going to soak that damage, and like that's high IQ gameplay, right? Like, and then he's never he's never in a situation where he's going to be hard pressured to die. Like, he's always, always, always has has that spatial awareness and that like internal time clock. Of like what he needs to do so i hope that gives you a little bit of um an understanding um but that comes with a lot of playing the game and a lot of watching demos and vods so i've noticed none of the teams have played sig as a main tank is it just not possible um i mean it's hard like there's just better combinations like sigma's immobile his shield's not very strong you know bunch of different bunch of different stuff um like like if you played if you play sigma like the, the thing is too it's like okay like you have Arissa, you have ryan you have winston you have really have ball and then you have sigma and it's like think about the value of those like what is sigma good at sigma is good at zone control right you put him in an area and you force a team to displace him. And if they don't, or if they want a 1v1 or do something, he's very hard to push off. And then if you put him up there with like a Zenny or whatever, um, it just makes it that much more difficult, right? So you, you do that and you lock down an area of the map that way and you force them to commit resources to push him out. Now with like Arissa or Monkey or, you know, whatever, Ryan, um, it doesn't play that way. Like two of them have like very high, high health, not high, it's very high health shields, but they both have, um, you know, very good shields. They both have, like, um, you know, Ryan has a higher shield. Arissa has a self-sustain, uh, you know, ability to live. Monkey has the jump out that he could, like, aggro. He could, like, pull, pull aggro in different locations away from your main group um, and get, like, value off of split targets. But Sigma doesn't really have that. Sigma needs to be an anchor somewhere. And you just go, hey, boom, we got to fucking plop your big booty over here. And you go do you, you know? Similar question. What did you say separates average main tank players from great main tank players? Uh, another similar uh, concept is that uh, that spatial awareness. Like, that's, that's number one. Like, I think main tank, main support, the ability to spatially understand where you are in a fight and see how it's going to play out is so important um and trust is a big thing and then um like i don't know how to say this um if you watch high level main tanks and, and mid-level main tanks they always under the high level main tanks will always understand where their regressions are They'll be comfortable. They'll know their timings on when they can hold something, when they need to leave. Like, for instance, if you're playing this corner, and then if you if you need to back up, where where to, when, how do you use your abilities to do it? Where where are your healers? Can you can you spatially understand where they are behind you, um, so that way you can make you know the one step in the right direction. There's a, a lot of stuff that goes into it, um, but. I don't think I ever saw. I don't know if Rain ever E Girl Mercy jumped in in this game. 
I don't think he ever did it. It's sad. Sag, dude. Sag. Yeah, so, I, I mean, at this point, we were pretty comfortable. Dreamer just goes to get back. Is that the, the official name of that ability? No, no, no. No. It's not Eagle Mercy Jump. That's not the official name of the the ability. But at this point, we're very comfortable that we're going to win, right? We're saying, okay, cool, we want damage boost blade. And we just Valk blade and kill their back line for free. At this point, we know the fight's over. We know we know we're, we're good to go. Um... It was a really good job of us to not falter and to be really comfortable with like, hey, listen, like we, what's up, liar? It's it's really, um, really good for us to be com comfortable enough in our own skin that it's like, hey, listen, this happened. Like we could we could just win this. It's not you know not a huge deal. Don't don't over you know don't overreact. Don't freak out. Anything like that. Um, it'll be fine. And you know. That's kind of uh, kind of how that one went. Uh... Meyer, what's up, my dude? Um, what's the difference between the first round you guys flopped and the last round? KSF not getting a blade for three and a half minutes, gravy not being on Sigma, and us dropping the spaghetti. Why did you guys play Mercy on this map instead of Brig? Because we um, we watched some of the APAC stuff, um, and Rain thought that in, in APAC, uh, they were running some Mercy, and Rain thought it could be really good. Uh, so we wanted to try it. And we tried it, and we liked it, and we stuck with it. Um, if you play the Mercy, you get less protection for your backline, right? So... It, Basically, okay, so the way, the way it works is since we're not running the Sigma and we're running D.Va, right? We have more peel for Lastro in a sense of Gravy can play D.Va and he can play it in a, that flexible Swiss Army Knife kind of way and he can go back and peel for Lastro. And if we're in the mirror matchup with Dive, if they're on Brig and we're on Mercy, we have a lot more pressure with our flankers. We have less brawl potential but more execute potential and um, Rain's very good at Mercy, so... Why am I streaming on YouTube? Because Valiant asked me if I would, and I told them I would. Um, they're holding me hostage for my gaming chair. And this is the last step that I need to, need to, need to go through. Uh, but no, nah, I mean, I just told them uh, I, just told them I wouldn't. They asked if, they asked if it would be possible. I said, sure, why not, buckaroo? We can do that. Um, what was the question I missed? Main difference between the first round that you guys flopped and that, yeah, so... Yeah, we should have been on Sigma. Um, we should have been on Sigma. Um, we should have taken space slower. It started off really bad with Dreamer and Ky Kyle inting, but, you know, uh, it is what it is. It was just a bad round of 2 CP, so... But like, okay, like this is one of the re like. Look at okay, watch watch Fusion's POV here. Okay, this is the, the difference between having a Brig or having a Mercy, right? He's like, like the, the burst damage. It, like, there's 300 burst damage there from right click. Uh, like dash right click, uh, didn't even hit all headshots. It, it's just really good, really good. Um, a lot of pressure, and like, it also gives them a harder target to dive upon, so that's good too. Uh, just curious, when you're scrimming another team, do you ask each other to play certain comps to get practice in? No, every team's practicing their own thing. Um, now. Do you try to book teams that play things that you want to see or that you think you could see sometimes? 
but it, it depends on how well the meta develops and what week you're in. Like week one of new hero pools, you usually try to scrim like every team once and just see what everybody's running. Week two, you, you know you're you know what everybody's running and you know who you're playing against, so you try to scrim against certain teams. Um, you know, or, it just kind of depends. But you, you don't get to, uh, you don't really get to do that. Unless it's like a, like a warm-up, like with like a contenders team or something. A lot of the contenders teams, um, if you have good relationships with them, like they'll play what you want them to play or what you think you're going to see in the warm-up. So. Uh, do you get to coach the players during the match or only during halftime or between rounds? Only during halftime and between rounds. So like Ilios ends, as soon as Ilios ends, they cut the Blizzard people come on the comms. They say, "Hey, do you have any substitutions?" You know, you go no. They go okay. Confirm it in the chat, and then you know you can talk to the players until the game starts again. Um, and then halftime, you know, you got your time to talk to them or whatever. So, word thanks. Yeah, no problem, Kevin. No problem. Just want to say you've done a fantastic job with the team. I had low hopes to start the season, but you made the team in something to be proud of. Well, Toxic, you know, that's a very anti-toxic thing of you to say. Um, but I said it, I did a lot of interviews the past couple weeks, but um, I know at the beginning of the year, everybody had their doubts. Um, I would be joking or lying, I should say, if if I didn't have, you know, my doubts and, you know, the coaching staff at the beginning of the year didn't have their doubts and our players didn't have their doubts. But when you get like-minded people in the same same space and you put you put in the work and you put yourself into an area where you want to grind and like uh, the transition from this year from last year to this year was very tough um it was very tough on me when i started because when i signed my new contract with valiant i did not know that we were going to have a budget cut i that was not anywhere in the realm of possibility for what i was thinking um, and it wasn't in the realm of possibility for, I think, what anyone was thinking. And then, you know, when the budget cut came, it was a little bit disheartening and frustrating. And, you know, there's tons of words I could use. But uh, at the end of the day, no matter what you do or what you want to do, if you if you drive yourself, if you're passionate enough, if you, if you push each other, other to be better, if you scout good players who care and who want to win and want to have that chip on their shoulder and... It, it, it comes to a world where you can be successful. And we have so many talented players between, you know, Lastro, KSP, Shax, uh, Gravy, Kai, Dreamer. Like, think about all the opportunities that these players did not get. Rain. I mean, they, they were thrown away on the side like they were, you know, like they were garbage, you know? And, like, we may not be perfect, you know? This was a huge clown fight. We may not be perfect, and nobody is, but... But to say we've, we've exceeded expectations from, you know, people all across the, all across the world, um, you know, so far, you know, that's... That's a good place to start. Good place to start. This fight's such a clown fiesta, dude. Yo, Bookworm, what's up? If you guys didn't know, Bookworm made my um made my emotes for Twitch uh last week. We got new new emotes. I think we're up to like four, maybe four or something. Oh yeah, at this point. I got mad at Gravy. We could watch his POV. Uh, Gravy took his hand off his keyboard. We could watch. We could watch this. He took his hand off his keyboard. Once he jumps on the cart here. You're not that guy. Well, I thought. Oh man. Well, you know, you should have taken credit for it, Bookworm. Bored Bookworm from the Valiant Discord. She made my emotes. So, you know, <laughs> that's funny, but. Just the wish we had Kriv in space, yeah. I miss Indian Kriv. Me, Indian Kriv, 
Um, especially me and Kariv. Uh, we, we play the uh, 1v1 arena. I should see if Kariv wants the 1v1 arena. He just dunks on me the whole time and makes fun of me and like calls me names in chat, but you know it is what it is. Great transparency. It's amazing how motivated you are as a coach and it shows through how the team performs. Thank you so much. Had it been a fan since the team was announced, maybe because favorite color is green and I had to move to SoCal. So I need a team to root for. You know, I uh, I can see that. I mean, hey, I I became a Dolphins fan. I became a Dolphins fan for the NFL because my dad's an Eagles fan, and he wanted me to be an Eagles fan. And they played the Dolphins, and the Dolphins smoked them. And I was like, yeah, that's my team. Growing up, that's my team. And I loved orange. Orange is my favorite color. You know, it, it, it's so funny, Kevin, how you could find these small things that create a bond with a with a team right like it, it's a it's a, sm a small minute thing. it could be a color scheme it could be one player it could be you know a location whatever and then as humans we we latch on to it and psychologically you know we we fall in love with this uh this team and sometimes it's even even euphoric you know um it's kind of crazy i like for me it's been that way with the, like with the dolphins and the mets and um you know, uh, the Sixers, 76ers. Like, I, I feel – I went to go see a Sixers game last year. Me, my brother, my dad. My brother lives in New York City. We went to a Sixers-Knicks game, and we went there. And me and my brother sitting there drinking beers. I felt like I was 12, man. Um, it, like, the feeling of, like, the sports and esports and everything can get you, especially at those live events. But, um, you know, it, it is really euphoric. The Mets have not been so hot this season. Yo, aren't they 2-2? Two and two? Aren't they? Didn't they lose today? They're two and two. They're not too bad. Dolphins fan, yikes! What do you mean? After last year, it was disheartening, but I never lost hope. And to see what you've done. Rules, awesome, man. Drinking beers feels like you're twelve. Yeah. Yeah. This defense um, or attack. I mean, I wasn't really paying attention. I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of chilling. Um. If you guys have questions and stuff, I'm uh, okay. So what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna. Uh, that, that's the review time. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hop in here really quick. I'm gonna see if Kriv's is Kriv around. Kriv's around, dude. Kriv is around, dude. I'm gonna message Kriv. I'm a one v one Kriv. I'm gonna beat him live here. We can make content out of it. It'll be great. It'll be great. Kriv. Let's play. I am streaming YouTube. I'm going. Kriv better be around. What heroes do I play in comp? Um, let's. Um, so back, I'll give you a, the chronology of packing 10, okay? I'm trash now. Absolute trash. I don't really play the game anymore. I, I'm absolute trash, okay? Um, season one came out and I was 63, okay? I was DPS player who flexed the Roadhog, because I played Roadhog a lot because I had to play it in the scrims. But I was... I was, I was uh, you know, 63, played the game a lot. Ended up, I was a Masters player when the game first came out. Got up to Season 3, playing main support. 4190, not too bad. That was back when ranked was really hard, you know. Was really hard. And then from shortly after this time period, uh, shortly after this time period, I started, um, I started, uh, coaching. So, like, you can see, I went from, like, 113 games to 45, and, like, I was, like, I got to 37-something, and then I just, you know, I stopped playing the game, and from that point, you know, you could just see, you know, 36, didn't play this one, didn't play that one, then I got placed in, in Diamond, and I actually played, and I was, like, I'm gonna grind out of here, and I'm, like, oh, shit, I suck, 
I've been coaching too long and not playing the game. And since that point on, I've been stuck in Diamond. Um, but I'm a Genji one trick. So if you guys if you guys want to peep it, if you guys want to peep it, if you want to peep the Genji. Fucking Crib, dude. Crib's like, nah, man, you suck. Crib's just like, you suck, bro. But we'll play like one game and then I'm probably gonna hop off. Might go on to, uh. Might go on to, uh, my Twitch channel. I might just chill. I don't know. I'm kind of tired today, low key, so. Bro, what is this tunage? Where's where's this one? I'm actually trash this game now, so don't make fun of me. Get out of here, you freak! Dude, I feel like huge input lag. Do you guys see the imp? Like, it looks like it at least. Alright. We're gonna rock one Genji game here for the boys back home. We. Oh my god. Maybe this and one. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. We got a nano. That's pretty cool. That ain't lag, that's being old. <laughs> Yo, you don't need to say it, bro. What the? No, 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 no. My sense has been so low since uh since I started playing Valorant a lot. I was um I used to be a really high sense gamer and now I'm like 803 in this game and I feel like that's so fucking slow. I might execute this mercy like a like a homie for the boys. Whoa, 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 whoa. Give me the orb, brother. Give me the orb. Yeah, I'm out of here. Yeah, I think I'm going to be in there. Ain't me. What the? Them. I just got... I'm insane. I'm not insane. Dude, playing this game now... It is so hard, my dude. Like... It is actually so hard for me to not be absolute dog. Because I am absolute dog now. Okay. Ate it, bitch. Oh my god, I'm so bad. Where the? We're gonna lose. 
Took a break for a minute, I'm terrible, yeah. Unlucky, dude. We'll, we'll roll one more. We'll run it back. We'll run it back, dude. We'll, we'll play one more. Fucking. Am I able to curse? I, I honestly didn't ask. Uh, whatever. If I don't ask, uh, you know, they I, it can't be wrong, right? So. What are these radio stations? There's a meta for console players? I don't know, bro. I would assume so. It's probably like Jay Silly and Bastion and a bunch of bunch of sh shit like that, so. These music channels suck. Holiday. Let's listen to some holiday music, bro. I'm in on that. I am in on that. Do we got a... Hate on console, I'm reporting upper management. I am upper management. I summoned the god himself. I've been on a one month break. After a whole season, he gets remastered again. Nice. Can't even get the higher gems to play as a sig. It happens, man. Dude, this is so pretty. Whoa. Wait, why can I not play? Let me in, bro. What? Yes. Real. What do we? Why is this guy's name Marley Toes? Dude, which way am I going? This way. This way. Wait, they're coming to me. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, bro, but... Dude, we already did the VOD review. No, get back here! I don't understand why that Torb is so fast. What What is the objective here? Run away from the black hole? My tank comp is Ball Hog. Yo, stop it, bro. No. Stop. I want to get to the end. I'm going to pull this guy outside the map. Dude, what is going on in this game? Huh. Fuck. Go, my child. No, no. What, what, what is this game? Bunch of hardos. Stop it. Dude, neither do I, man. I'm just trying to get a quick play game. Get out! Get stunned, idiot. Dude, stop! <laughs> no, let me finish. Stop it, dude. I'm so close. Get out of No, get out of here, bro. No, I just wanna get to the, wanna get to the thing, bro. I'm gonna one v one me on Doom. No, I'm gonna play one game and.
Oh my god! How? No, no. Is it like... I just get a game? I just want to play one game. Yeah, I'm going to the light. I'm going in. It's so pretty, dude. Perfect. MMR is too high for quick play. Yeah, something like that. Alright. Let's bust it out. One time for the boys back home. OG skin. Killer, thank you. Get games fast. Yeah. EDM. This is the channel I used to listen to. This one's bangers. Alright. I had you add on Lucian 2, but didn't have you added my main. I don't know, bro. It ain't me. It ain't me. I don't know, bro. We're gonna jam out here, boys. I hope you can listen, because we are popping the music on. We are gonna pop off. Well, yeah, we got the Agilities Genji, dude. Fucking swing chip, dude. Oh, I need to reload. You bitch, bro. Fucking ball players. Fucking ball players. I'm gonna die. Heal me. Bring it back. 2092. My God. Yeah. Stop. Fucking swing, dude. This music? This is what I'm talking about, though. Bomb, 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 bomb. Bomb, bomb, the Winston's back here spawn camping. I'm gonna go execute someone. What do you guys want to bet on the execute on the Zen? Oh, nope, 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 nope. Climb the wall, no! Alright, alright. We're bad, bro. Oh, you hate to see it. You hate to see that one. Dude, I swear. I swear that was a kill. We we may suck the game, but we'll still play like we're good, you know what I mean? I'm gonna get this nano blade, we're gonna clip it, we're gonna act like this was a top 500 game on a nano blade, and we're gonna post it everywhere. We're literally gonna post it everywhere. Bitch. Yo, Anna. Whoa. I'm going back here. Right here. He nanoed?
bitch. I'm gonna die to there, Genji. Nice. This is YouTube, dude. Clip. Hey, listen. I don't know. I don't know how it works. All right. Do I play Genji? Do I play Genji? Do I bust out a different hero? Because the Genji ain't really working out right now, bro. I wanted a nano. I was trying to talk to the Anna. He just kind of ignored me. I'm dead. I'm dead. Not just kidding. I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm over it. So I don't play the game anymore. God, bro. You know what? I'm going to pop off on some fucking golf it, though. Golf with your friends? I slam at that game. I'm going to execute somebody. You guys ready for this? Get ready to clip it. That's not a kill character we can kill. Yep. No. Why are they on fucking brick, bro? Dude. My blades... Take longer to build than Kyle's. All right, we're gonna we're gonna. It's the mouse. It's the mouse. So it is. Dude, I have one kill. I have one kill. Comical. Some may say. Are you kidding me? No, uh, yeah, the Genji nerf's coming through already. Nah, man, that's just my gameplay. My gameplay's a big enough Genji nerf. Happens, bro. Mario Nano Blade this fight, let's go. This is my moment to shine. This is my moment to shine, guys. This is unlucky. Uh, okay, yeah. <sighs> you hate to see it. Stop it. You know... <sighs> oh, no, 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 I'm getting banged. Did it. God, dude. <sighs> yeah, it should, it should make your content, dude. It should. Oh, my lord. Uh, you hate to see it, you know? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. You love to see it. You love to see it. You love to see it. You 
love to see it, dude. You really don't love to see it. It's not really great. Uh, but we can end on a on a positive note. You know, there's the clip. We got the clip. You know, it is what it is. May not have been our best showing in the Overwatch arena, as they may say. But I don't get paid to do that. So it's like, you know... It's okay. It's okay. But, anyways... I think that's going to be it for me. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the YouTube content uh, for LA Valiant. And if... You know, content says that it did a good job or whatever, then they'll probably force me to do it again because that's what content does. So, uh, I hope you guys had a good time. Make sure you guys follow me, twitter.com. Wait, hold up. I don't know what my thing is. If you don't know my thing, it is twitter.com hacking underscore 10. I think I'm on display capture, so this should be fine. Yep. Packing underscore 10. Make sure you go follow that. And then you can follow my Twitch, which is just packing 10. Just packing 10 there. We do, you know, Valorant and Valiant content on there. And um, I appreciate all you guys for coming by and hanging out. It was a great time. Um, am I going to stream on Twitch? I'm probably going to stream something stupid like golf golf with friends or something with uh, a couple of my buddies now are just going to chill. Um, but yeah, I plan to stream for like next, like maybe like two hours or so. So um, it's either going to be golf with friends or it might be like high level Valorant. So um, again, thank you guys for coming. I hope you guys enjoyed the, the content or what there was of it um, or lack of content with the uh, gameplay. So I uh, appreciate you guys and make sure you uh, throw me a follow. Make sure you follow the channel and subscribe with the LA Valiant Twitter uh, YouTube as well.